Maybe you watched the recent video on secured hubs with custom root tables. As I said at the end of that video, today we need to look for workarounds to make secured hubs work cross region. So in this video, I want to present one of those workarounds and talk a bit more broadly around this subject area. This was a topology from last time with a secured hub with blue spokes and red spokes. And I said, if you scale that up to two regions, we had to be aware of a caveat in the documentation around filtering into hub traffic. So if you're a large enterprise customer and you're across multiple regions, but you want to deploy a design that uses Azure Firewall with secured hubs, how should you approach the topic? How should you think about it? Well, the first thing to call out is this will be fixed for secured virtual hubs in the future. And this will fall within the remit of the routing intent feature we have in virtual WAN. So when that becomes generally available, we'll expect that to enable the secured hub feature between regions. As it stands today, we read through the documentation, which I'll leave linked to below around routing intent. One of the things it does call out though, that inter-region traffic isn't inspected by Azure Firewall or MVAs today. So if you want to deploy this sort of global topology with Azure Firewall today, what options do we have? Well, with the help of my colleague, Gary McMahon from the UK, we're going to zoom in on what I call the tiered VNet model. And that is documented on our Azure Virtual WAN documentation pages. And effectively, it talks about using Virtual WAN for your global routing backbone between regions where we can still connect P2S users, VPN branches, et cetera, et cetera, and have those multiple hubs spread across multiple regions. But we move that filtering function down a layer. So the pink dot here represents an NVA. Equally, it could represent Azure Firewall. We move that down a layer, and then our other secured VNets hang off that. So all traffic will pass through these pink dots when talking to the second tier of VNets below. Now, I won't belabor the design and traffic patterns in detail because Gary covers that in his section. But what I will do, just to sort of tee up the technical discussion, what we're effectively saying here is we're taking this aspirational design, which will work in the future on the platform, where we say we want the secured virtual hubs, which we said before is where we have the Azure Firewall inside of the VUN hub. Today, that wouldn't allow blue to talk to red across regions. It does work in the same region as we showed in the previous video. One workaround for that is, as we show in the thumbnail to this video, is we insert an additional layer here. So we move the firewall out of the virtual WAN hub and put it into a traditional hub virtual network and hang that off our global Azure virtual WAN. It's important to call out that that doesn't change the Azure Firewall management story. We can still manage that using Azure Firewall Manager. So if you have two regions, four or 10 regions, you can still deploy your security intent in a programmatic way. So let's talk a little bit about the reasons why you might look to this design. So first of all, it gives you that multi-region via Azure Firewall that a lot of customers look to. And it does so whilst simplifying your global routing use of manual UDRs is greatly reduced here. As Gary shows, the UDRs from the spoke VNets uh, are greatly simplified. The inter-region UDRs that you normally need with these sort of designs go away. There is an element of static routing configured here on the VNet connections, as Gary shows. But again, if you've got predictable pre-assigned address space, that's not an issue. This design does offer some benefits. One is you have ultimate flexibility in terms of what this object is. In Gary's video and in what I'm showing here, it's Azure Firewall, which is a popular decision with customers, but it could equally be any third-party network virtual appliance, which you point your routing at. And then one thing that I will call out, which is sometimes missed when you first look at this design, is it does have some benefits when it comes to root advertisement flexibility. So if we sort of step back a little bit, this dual tiered model where you've kind of got a hub, a hub, and then a spokes has never really been possible on Azure until we had the capability to do these VNet connection level static routes in virtual WAN. What that means, for example, is you could have a collection of spokes down here, which do get advertised into your virtual WAN, but you could also define another set of spokes down here. You know, perhaps you have an isolated environment or an environment for whatever reason 
you don't want advertised back to your on-premises express route. You know, perhaps you had some, let's call them isolated, and they live out here as a different category of virtual network. Let's do them in turquoise. And they're also connected to this hub. Now these, these VNets here could have reachability this way, but you could scope that. You could bound the reachability there. Because if you don't define a static route at this level that includes the address space for a VNet, then it won't leak out into your virtual WAN. And there are certainly some designs, um, especially when it comes to acquisitions and mergers and multi-tenant designs within a, a same company like sub-org scenarios where this can be a powerful design. It's definitely something that you want to think about and have in your toolkit as a network architect working on Azure. Okay, with that said, let's get into the demo and I'll hand over to Gary. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Gary McMahon and I'm an industry aligned cloud solution architect for Microsoft. I'm working with a number of customers at this time that have committed to making good use of our Azure Virtual WAN service. And this has provided me with impetus to deliver a short demonstration today, focusing on the scenario of routing traffic through an NVA. Now, this could be a third party network virtual appliance, or for the case of my demo, I'm making use of our native Azure Firewall service. Now, this demonstration originates from the article shown here, which I've linked to. It just makes good use of our Azure Virtual WAN service in turn delivering a global fully meshed network connectivity allowing our customers to make sense of and simplify all of their branch connectivity, whether that be point to site users, site to site VPN, or even express route connectivity into regional hubs, which are then meshed together within an Azure virtual WAN. Now, as you can evidence here, I've deployed virtual hubs into Europe West and North Europe. Now, these hubs are virtual hubs. They are not secured virtual hubs. The reason being is secured virtual hub to secured virtual hub is not supported today cross region. And so instead, I'm making use of NVA VNets and placing an Azure firewall into those NVA VNets, namely VNet 2 and 4. Now, these are connected to the hub. And also, I'm making use of these indirect spoke VNets, namely five and six paired to the NVA VNet, and seven and eight paired to VNet4, which is the NVA VNet in North Europe. Now, in terms of how the routing works, at high level, each hub makes use of a default route table. I've made use of an aggregate route, firstly. So to get to 10 to all the zeros slash 16, which is the collection of these VNets here, I'm defining a next hop of my virtual network connection, Europe West VNet 2 connection. And the same is mirrored across the other region. Then specifically, the actual virtual network connection supports the use of static routes. So then my static routes are specific to the address spaces of VNet 5 and 6 and equally VNet 7 and 8. So just for uh, completeness, um, if I were to point a site into my local hub, from there I may target um, a service in VNet 7. So the next hop would be to the VNet connection Europe VNet4 connection within this fully meshed network. The file would allow the flow then onwards through the peered connection to the indirect spoke VNet and hitting the target service. Now let's get started by looking at the Azure portal. Now this is the Azure Virtual WAN blade where I'm showing um, two um, hubs within my virtual WAN, my West and Europe hubs. They must have unique address space. They should not conflict with any other VNet on Azure or on premises for that matter. They're placed into opposite regions. Now, in terms of the branch connectivity I spoke of, I'm not making any use of site to site or express route for this demo, but instead I'm making use of point to site VPN. Now for clarity, Azure Firewall is not deployed 
as I'd stated earlier, these are virtual hubs. They are not secured virtual hubs. A secure virtual hub is where you would place the firewall in the hub. Whereas for the demo here to allow the cross regional firewalling, my firewalls are placed in a VNet outside of the hub, which is connected. Let me start by looking at my virtual network connections. Starting with Europe West, VNets 1 and 2 are directly connected to the hub. So VNets 1 and 2 are connected here. And then for completeness in Europe North, VNets 3 and 4 are here, 3 and 4 connected to the North Europe hub. Now let me dig into my hubs to my West Europe hub and to my routing blade. For this simple demo, I'm making use of a default route table. Now customers can make use of custom route tables in addition. And as you can see, just two routes at this time. So the first route, which is a route to Azure Firewall within VNet2, which is here, would go to that aggregate route of 10.2 or the 0 slash 16 via a next hop of Europe West VNet2 connection. And the next route is route to Azure File within VNet4, which is here, again targeting the aggregate route 10.4 or the 0 slash 16 via Europe North VNet4 connection. And cleverly uh, drilling into the next hop for Europe West, we can see those specific static routes which are associated to the virtual network connection itself, starting with route to VNet5, which would uh, go via a next hop of 10204, which is my Azure Firewall instance deployed within the NVA VNet. And the same for uh, route to VNet 6 by the same next hop of 10204. Now, this configuration then is mirrored to the opposite region. Now, let's let me um, navigate to our Azure Firewall blade, and in particular to my West Europe firewall deployed in VNet2 to rules and network rule collection. The first rule I've shown here is one which allows VNet1, which is directly connected to the hub, to connect via TCP22 or SSH through to both VNets5 and 6, which are within the same region. So let me start there by firstly point to site VPNing into the hub, connecting to my jump box within VNet1, and then onward to a VM within VNet5, which um, fires this, um, this first rule. So as you can see, I've got a couple of point-to-site VPN connections here. I'll connect to West Europe, now showing as connected, and using Git Bash, I will connect 10104. So 10104 being uh, the first octet of my subnet of my vnet1 this the file was allowing a flow from that um, jump box through to a vm in in vnet5 so let me this time target 10 2 1 4 just demonstrating this regional connectivity from branch to hub hub to target service now going back to the portal Perhaps more interesting is this next rule, which is VNet 5 to 7. So 5 is here to 7 in opposite regions, therefore making use of this fully mesh network connectivity, making use of our low latency, high speed backbone. I will target 10414. 1, being um, a VM within a subnet of VNet 7 in the opposite region. And there we have it connected successfully. Now just as a final piece, let me disconnect from my point to site VPN. Just to round out the demo, I just wanted to talk briefly of Azure Firewall Manager. Now Azure File Manager is um, geared to delivering enterprise scale and suits organizations that have presence in multiple regions and geopolitical regions of Azure. Now for the demo, I'd simply deployed my NVA VNet as a traditional hub VNet and manually deployed Azure Firewall into it. What I could have equally done is made better use of Azure Firewall Manager and created the NVA VNet as a hub virtual network, therefore automatically deploying an Azure Firewall instance into that hub VNet. 
and then making use of Azure file policies. So this is the notion of defining um, a global policy that may be deployed to all instances of Azure Firewall worldwide and also supporting both base policies and inheritance such that every hub uh, in every region may initially inherit from the base policy and then enforce its own specific policy or policies um, for that region. Now, hopefully this has helped to uh, bring to life a number of our services. Uh, thank you very much for listening.